This video is for women. I do these periodically, just straight up advice for women as to how to deal with men. And I think that most men on listening to the videos I've done that have advised women have pretty much agreed with what I have to say. So here goes another one. Recently, a YouTuber fucked up. I mean, he's a minor YouTuber. I mean, in the scheme of things, it's nothing, right? This minor YouTuber completely torpedoed his career. Uh, he's not going to survive this scandal that he's involved in, that just false flagging and some other shit, and it's over for him, okay? But the thing is, and the thing that has me thinking about this particular case, is that this man, see, has a newborn child. The child is uh, eight months old, I believe. And he lives in a house in Washington State, uh, uh, a house that he bought not too long ago, he's paying the mortgage on. And the reason this is an issue is that, see, his entire income comes from YouTube. And his YouTube career has just imploded. See? I can imagine what his common law wife must be thinking right now. She must be thinking, what the hell are we going to do? Because this guy's income derived exclusively from YouTube. And his career was on a downward uh, trend. But because of the recent events, his career, his YouTube channel, it's collapsing. I mean, his, his total income stream is collapsing because of his foolishness, right? And the guy is flailing. The guy is drowning. And I thought to myself, you know, what his common law wife must be thinking. And I thought to myself, what other women must be thinking when their man begins to fail. When the man that they hitch their wagon to all of a sudden is in a ditch. Okay. Uh, what do they do? First of all, you have to understand that in a long-term relationship, the man you're with is going to go through peaks and troughs and some of those troughs they're, they're going to be pretty pretty down deep you know i mean he's going to go through some rough times it's inevitable and i'll explain why because more often than not you see a woman is attracted to a man when he's confident when he's a winner when he's successful when he's exuding that aura of uh, self-assurance you know, th that confidence and self-assurance is catnip for women. And so, of course, they're inevitably drawn to it. They want to be with a man who's confident and in control. They want to be with a man who's a winner. Uh, of course. No, what? You ever heard of a woman who says, yeah, you know, I'm really looking for a loser that I can hitch my wagon to? Of course not. All right? So, when a woman, uh, you know, finds a guy, he's going to be, you know, on an upward trajectory. He's going to be confident. He's going to be in control. He's going to be attractive to the woman, and the woman is going to go to him and be with him. And there are two possibilities, that the guy just continues to go up and up and up like a rocket ship, or, as much more likely, that you know he'll continue to go up, and then he'll go down, and then up and down like a sine wave, because that's life. Well, life is a sine wave. There are you know, peaks and troughs. You know? there, there are high points and low points, right? Right. So, it's inevitable if a woman is in a long-term relationship that she is going to experience a time when her man is at a low point, when he is failing, okay? Now, if the man you're with is failing, the first thing you have to identify is why is he failing, okay? There are fundamentally three reasons that he might be failing. And I'm not talking about just his job or work. It could be anything. I mean, in his life in general, right? But often as not, it's work-centered because so much of a man's life is his work. But there are principally three reasons why a man could be failing. And those three reasons are he's distracted, he's going through a spell of bad luck, or he has some bad qualities that were not obvious before but now are starting to emerge, okay? Uh, let me go through them one by one. You see, a lot of times a man, uh, you know, he'll be very successful and a woman will naturally gravitate to him and th they'll hook up and they'll be very happy and that happiness, the very happiness that the man has found with a woman will be a source of distraction. 
it will will make him you know lose sight of what he's doing in so far as his career is concerned or, or the important aspects of his life are concerned it's it's very very normal for this to happen uh, uh, lots of times guys who are just happily and and blissfully in love all of a sudden find their careers are going down the toilet okay uh, it's it's not unusual at all and uh, I myself have gone through a period like that and you ask 10 guys and probably seven or eight of them will, will say the same thing, that they fell deeply in love, they were very, very happy with some woman and that happiness distracted them from their job. And of course, there can be other distractions, of course. I mean, like illness or children. Children are a great distraction. They, they are a wonderful distraction for a man, of course, because a man wants to have children. But, you know, sometimes, you know, the, the baby waking up in the middle of the night and, and the guy is just not sleeping that well. And because of it, his performance at work starts to deteriorate a bit. You know, all kinds of stuff can happen with a child, okay? Even if the man is very, very happy having the child, okay? Again, th this is something I experienced. I, you know, when my first child was born, I was hardly getting a wink of sleep, and you know, I was a zombie in so far as the work that I had to accomplish. Right, right. It's it's just natural. Okay. So anyway, there can be these distractions. So if you're his woman, you have to figure out if he's distracted, and if he is distracted, you have to help him avoid that distraction, or at least minimize that distraction. Right. Help him and support him to get back on his feet, if you will, or, or not get back on his feet, just sort of like avoid that distraction or minimize that distraction so that he's back focused on his priorities, you know, in this case, his work, right? Right, so that, that's the easiest one of the three possible reasons that a man is failing. And distraction, that, that's an easy cure, okay? And it's important that you cure it, by the way, because uh, that you, the woman, or you, the man, because uh, distraction, if it is allowed to continue too long, it can cause permanent damage to your career or to your work or business. So never, you never take your eye off the ball for too long. Never allow yourself to be distracted for too long, okay? Now, the second reason that a man could be failing, the second reason a man could be going down the tubes, I mean, just circling the drain, is bad luck. See, a lot of times uh, you'll go through a stretch of bad luck. A man will go through a stretch of bad luck in work of just, you know, everything that he's doing, all the projects that he's involved in, they just don't work out. I've gone through such stretches and they were not fun. And they seriously affected the relationships I was in, okay? Because the woman looked at me different because all of a sudden I had this string of bad luck and the bad luck was really bad luck. It wasn't that I was you know, doing something stupid or just didn't know what I was doing. I knew exactly what I was doing. I was doing it properly and correctly, but just a series of, a series of unfortunate events transpired, right? Just a, a, sequence, a sequence of bad luck started to happen. You, you go through cold streaks. It's perfectly normal, okay? In that case, you as a woman, you have to look at your man and you have to figure out, you know, well, what's going on here? Is the guy really just unlucky? Is this just a, a, a bad luck streak? Because if it's just a bad luck streak, it'll turn around, okay? No uh, streak of bad luck la lasts forever. If you keep on pushing, it'll turn around eventually, okay? And, and see, this is very important if you're a woman. See, see how your man handles a streak of bad luck. If it's really just bad luck, and he keeps on going and going and going and, and just never uh, lays down and never just gives up. If he just keeps on going through this streak of bad luck, then you got yourself a winner. Because that kind of a man, you know, if he's, if he's smashing his head against the wall of bad luck, eventually his head is going to win, no matter how hard the wall, okay? Because like I said, bad luck always turns around. Just as good luck can never last, bad luck can never last, okay? So, if it's a, a streak of bad luck, you as a woman have to look at the situation and hand to heart figure out if it's you know a bad qualities of the man or stupidity of the man or foolishness of the man or truly bad luck. And if you can say hand to heart uh, without any sentimentality that it is bad luck, then you have to support your man, okay? You have to support him with everything you have, especially if he's continuing to push, push and push, smashing his head against the wall of bad luck eventually he'll break through and your relationship will become stronger because of it, okay? Now, the third reason are the bad qualities of a man. And this is important. See, 
Men have good qualities and bad qualities. And sometimes these bad qualities are very, very useful. There are certain bad qualities that can be turned into enormous assets insofar as your work is concerned. You know, being a very cold-hearted son of a bitch, for instance, is very useful in certain occupations, especially in the corporate environment. The ability to be cold-hearted, to be merciless, all of these qualities and in other circumstances can be considered very bad in a work life can be considered very good. But the problem is that, see, these bad qualities, when they are turned toward productive directions, yeah, they can bring about success. But what happens if that success starts to evaporate? What if the guy is just the son of a bitch, right? And he's the son of a bitch, and because of his, his being such a big son of a bitch, he gets really far ahead in his work, in his work life, in his career, right? But what happens if he gets to a level where being a son of a bitch actually goes against him? You see, when you get to a very high level in the corporate sphere, it can be that being a son of a bitch, being an asshole, actually hurts your career because it makes it so that other people don't want to work with you. And when other people don't want to work with you, your career can suffer and you can be cut out and your career can start to circle the drain. The quality, the assholishness, if you will, the, the son of a bitchness of the man that got him far, that maybe were the reasons that you were attracted to him, well, it could get to a point where that no longer helps him to advance and in fact hurts his career or other negative qualities that he might have. I mean, there are myriads of, of neg negative qualities. That's, I'm not interested here in identifying those negative qualities. I'm saying the situation can be such that those negative qualities hurt his career and make him start to fail, make him start to drown, make him start to circle the drain. Now, this is an interesting conundrum for a woman. See, because a lot of times women will meet some guy and they'll say, he is an asshole, I hate him, I just dislike him intensely. He's an asshole, he's an asshole, he's an asshole. And then they get to know him a little bit more and she still considers him an asshole. But see, the fact that he's an asshole makes him successful and that success, as I said before, is catnip to a woman. And she becomes more and more attracted to him and eventually she winds up with the guy. And her friends ask her, you know, how is it that you're with John Smith? You said that John Smith was an asshole. And the woman will sheepishly say, yeah, he was an asshole, he is an asshole, but you know, the heart wants what the heart wants. Yeah, yeah. a lot of times those negative qualities are precisely the qualities that attract the woman. Those negative qualities coupled with his success, coupled with his self-confidence, coupled with that aura of control that he might have because of the success, because of the success brought by those negative qualities. But if those negative qualities start to turn, and in rather than bringing success, they start to bring failure, then a woman's relationship with that man can curdle. I mean, like, uh, like milk that's gone sour, okay? I mean, I've seen it. I've seen it lots of times, where a woman just comes to despise the man that she was deeply in love with at one time. She was deeply in love with this guy who had these negative qualities, and in a very real sense, she fell in love with those negative qualities, until she wasn't in love with him anymore. She wasn't in love because she got sick of those negative qualities because she realized that they were negative qualities, right? A lot of times this will happen. A lot of times those negative qualities, especially when things aren't going well for a man's career, those negative qualities will start to flourish or emerge or be revealed. A lot of times a woman won't even realize the negative qualities that a man has until he starts to fail. Because a lot of times what happens is that success sort of like blinds women to the qualities of the man, the true qualities of the man, the true qualities and defects of the man. Yeah, the success blinds her and when that success goes away, when the man begins to flail, when he begins to circle the drain, she sees those qualities, she sees those defects and she doesn't like what she sees. Mm, that happens all the time. That happens all the time. Now, if you're a woman and you're with a man and you're in a long-term relationship, maybe you have a child together, right? You're married or not, who knows, who cares? That's your business, but the point. See, you're with a man in a long-term relationship and he starts to fail. 
he, he, his success starts to diminish or deteriorate. Things go south for him, right? You have to figure out why things are going south. Like I said, if he's distracted or he's going through a streak of bad luck, that's one thing. And that can be solved. Distraction can be solved by helping him refocus on what's important. The bad luck, that's just a, a, an issue of waiting it out and supporting him. But when you realize that the man you're with has bad qualities, bad qualities that you don't want to be associated with, uh, that's different. When you realize that his previous success had blinded you to his true deficiencies and faults, it'll be very natural for you to become very bitter towards him because you'll feel as if he had fooled you. This happens all the time. This happens all the time, especially with men who have a great deal of money and they uh, land a woman and they wind up getting married and having a child or two and then the money goes away for whatever reason and the woman all of a sudden realizes, you know, this asshole, you know, he had money and he blinded me with the money, right? And, you know, I'm not saying that the woman was a gold digger, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is that a lot of times money can blind a woman, okay? Because money is a signifier. What does it signify? It signifies success. It signifies that the man can handle himself. A man can afford to have a family. A man can afford a family, a nest, so that the woman can have children. And so she's attracted to that because everybody, every woman or most women want to have children, want to have a nest. They want to have a nice house with a nice yard uh, and maybe a swimming pool in the back and have two or three or four rugrats and have a nice and happy and financially stable life that's perfectly normal and reasonable. And if the money goes away, then the woman is severely disappointed and she starts to look at the men more critically. Okay? Well... A woman has to figure out what's what in that situation, okay? And she has to figure out whether the um, situation is such that the man will never get back on the horse, see? See, because in the first two cases, insofar as distractions are concerned or um, the issue of just bad luck, see, if, if, if you just persist, things will go back to status quo ante, right? And so you won't have to worry. Things will get back to normal and everybody will be happy. But if you as a woman realize that the man you're with has seriously negative qualities that you hadn't realized before or you'd been blind to before, well, then you have to make up your mind whether you're going to remain with him or not. Mm -hmm. And the smart thing is to make the decision quickly. Don't uh, beat around the bush. Don't procrastinate. Don't um, stretch out the decision. Look at your man coldly and figure out what's what. Now, this is advice I'd give to my daughter, okay? I mean, I, I'm, I'm just being as forthright and frank as possible. And a lot of men watching this might be pissed off at me, you know, that I'm not saying, oh, you know, you should tell the woman to always support her man and blah, blah. Uh-uh. I don't think that, okay? Life is short and this is the only life we get. Okay, and do you really want to go down the drain with a man who just has, you know, bad qualities, who's just a bad man? No, you don't, right? Now, is this justification to leave a man who's going through a, a streak of bad luck or has just been momentarily distracted from, uh, you know, from what he should be doing? No, not at all. I mean, leaving a man, breaking up a long-term relationship, especially when there are children involved, is not a decision to be lightly taken. This isn't a casual thing. It's not like uh, saying, oh, are we gonna eat out or go to a restaurant? No, no, no. This is important, okay? This affects your life and it also affects the life of your couple and the life of your children. Okay, so as a woman, you have to make up your mind in a intelligent, rational, cold-hearted way. And the decision is, do I remain with this man who has these negative qualities, whom I do not like, perhaps, perhaps I've grown to despise, but if I remain with him, will he provide for our children? Will he provide a, uh, you know, financially, will he provide the love that the children of necessity need? Will he provide those things, okay? I mean, you as a woman, you have to take yourself out of the equation and look at the man and look at what he can provide to your family unit. I mean, I'm talking here, uh, supposing that you have children, right? 
So you have to figure out, can the man you're with provide for the children? Can the man you are with uh, uh, provide them financially and, and in terms of affection, right? You have to look at that and make up your mind. And here's the other thing, see? Is it financially sensible to divorce? Because sometimes, sometimes a financial situation is such that to get a divorce, both you, the woman, and the man you're divorcing would live very, very precarious circumstances, financially speaking. The, the divorce would make you both live more miserably in a financial sense, and the children too. And so you might hate the guy because you've discovered these negative qualities about him, but it might be a smart idea to just stick with him, you know, and just continue living with him because financially it makes more sense. Quality of life would be better if you remain together. And this is a cold-hearted decision, but you can't go by, by your emotions. Just because you've, you've discovered that the man you're with is just somebody that you do not like n does not mean that, oh, you should just leave him. You know? No, sometimes you have to suck it up and live with somebody that you do not like because it's the sensible thing. You see what I'm saying? I mean, how can I put that? This is a, a, a difficult subject because us men, we don't ever want to think of ourselves as ever being failures, but it's inevitable. Not everybody can be a success and no man or very few men manage to be successes their entire lives. Every man goes through a period of not being successful. Every man does. It's perfectly normal, okay? Because like I said, life is a sine wave. It, there are ups and there are downs. The issue becomes, why is there a trough? If it's just a natural state of affairs, you know, some, some good years in terms of good luck in business and what have you, and then some bad years because just things didn't go well, ah, then you just got to roll with it, okay? And you can't be leaving a man just because of that. That's ridiculous. But if the man has really bad qualities that are only revealed once things are going south, well, that's a different issue. That's a different issue and you have to decide for yourself in a rational way whether it makes sense to continue with him. See? I'm thinking about this case that I started off this post with. I'm deeply troubled with it and deeply saddened by it, okay? Because I can only imagine the nightmare that must be going on in this man's life. The nightmare that's going on in that little house that he and his common-law wife and his child are living in. In that house, it must be anger and recrimination and just spiteful words day and night. It must be a misery because the man, you know, failed to uphold his part of the bargain because every long-term relationship, especially involving a child, involves a bargain, a transaction. The man is saying that he will provide and the woman is saying that she will take care of their child, okay? And if either one is failing to live up to that bargain, then it can be quite the nightmare. If you're the woman in that situation, you have to look out for the best interests of your child, not yours. Your interests, your well-being, your happiness is second, very secondary to the best interests of your child. Never forget that. And never forget too that a lot of times things can get better all on their own. So sometimes the best course of action is paradoxically not to do anything.